Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at two Diageo special releases, Dustin, and compare them, uh, both from the Kleinlish Distillery Select Edition 1 and Select Edition number 2. One being on your right, our left, and this is number 2 being on our right, your left. Represented equally here in the glasses, to give you a quick tale of the tape, as far as ABV, Edition 1 comes off at 54.9, and Edition 2 comes in at... 56.1 so slightly bigger on this particular one both whiskeys have about four or five different types of cast that go into this nas maturation the youngest whiskeys of which are 15 years old which you know from the pamphlets that the whiskeys came with dustin we recently did edition number one i gave it a 90 you gave it an 89 we did edition number two sometime in the past and it's been a while since we've revis well, revisited this whiskey you, actually yeah, it's been that long. Yeah, it has been a while. Yeah, but a whiskey that we've drank together many times. We've been through a few bottles. <laughs> been through a few bottles. The issue number two was one of the Ohio giveaway specials at two ninety five. I, I do believe that this one may have had a listed bodega sherry, whereas this one listed just refilled sherry. It was refilled bodega <laughs> sherry. It's not first fill. But let's get to the. Let's yep. get to it. These both these whiskeys have less than three thousand bottles, maybe twenty and hundred some change of both of them, but they're still out there. You can still get both mm -hmm. of these bottles somewhere. They weren't. Great sellers, um, very high price initially on the Diageo special releases. Definitely high price. Yes, uh, well north of five hundred dollars, under a thousand, but in that you know six to eight hundred dollar range, depending on where you were. That's very high for a very high price for an NA S whiskey that not a lot of people know. But it is natural color, unshield filtered, and a good cast strength ABV, and you know use some quality casts, as us and I have mentioned before. Diageo has done a nice job with some of these special releases, especially the older ones. The only yeah. question is, are you getting fair value for the money? Let's get to it. Yep. So All right. With the two. Yeah, I start with the second one. Number second one first. I always thought that the lighter one slightly. Yeah. Uh, man, I'm getting like a little bit of um, like a, just a fruit chew of some sort. Very light, vibrant fruits. Yeah. Light but vibrant. You know what I mean? So like now maybe like a lemon, um, like a lemon chew of some sort. Yeah. I mean, it's very. Um, it's not super bitter. It's very much on the sweet side, but yeah. Yeah. Wow. Almost a lavender smell too in it. Just, just a, it's almost not only is it orchard fruits, but it's almost like walking through a, a field of flowers. Yeah, an apple and a pear had a baby for sure. Yep. An apple, a pear, yeah, with like a lemon head overcoat. <laughs> There's almost parts of this reminds me of the uh, 2016 Spring Bank 25, especially that flowerly lilac note. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm. Kleinlich always confuses me, Mike, because it gives me notes that remind me of Pete, but I don't know, but it like doesn't have. But again, when I taste it, it has nothing that says peat about it. Like, mm -hmm. it, but it always has this like earthy, organic thing. Farmy is kind of how I said it. Farmy in a good way. Yeah, but it's not like um, like a local barley type. Not mm -hmm. Springbank, but like the local barley you get with like uh, Brook Lottie uh, when they do their own peated stuff. Like, it's just it's it's its own thing. Yeah, it is. But that own thing, when I say by farmy, it's waxy, but it's also dry hay to me to some degree. Very, dry hay with a little bit of honey. Very citrusy. Yeah, great nose. Juicy citrus, man. All right, I'm going to switch over to the Starburst. Batch one. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. Mm. In the Starburst. And this one's definitely, you can tell there's a darker sherry note to this, to, to the addition one here. Okay, initially all I'm really picking up, Mike, is the different, well, just the intense, heavy vanilla bourbon. Oh, well, vanilla for sure, but vanilla and sherry to me. The, the fruits are darker, that vanilla is there, and the, the honey stands out. See, I'm getting more sherry on the two. I'm getting more oak. Vanilla, maybe a hint of chocolate, which is maybe where you're getting the sherry note. It's darker. Addition one. It's yeah, well, yeah, it's it's much more bourbon cast, whereas to me this one's more sherry cast. This one's more fruity. This one's more um, dessert. But all, every, both of these whiskeys have all of those elements to some degree. I mean, this is still fruity. <laughs> this still, I don't know if I got chocolate here, but I got everything else. Mm. Oh my god! This smells I don't know like which, dessert. I, I don't even know which one I even prefer. Th this this smells like dessert. This is straight up, oh, like just a beautiful dessert. The chocolate chip cookies and this one meets like this one's fruit. more a picnic in a flower field when you have in an orchard, oh. and the sun's out and there's citrus and flowers all out mm. here. Yeah, I, I, I'm continuing to get more sherry on this one, which is really kind of making me lean that direction. It's a really nice. 
I'll say this. This one has a more unique nose. And when I get flowers and lilacs and, and you know, and, and some older whiskeys and things like that, I always, it's such a rare note. And again, every time I experience that, it's always this or Spring Bank 25, 2016, yeah. which was my favorite. It's not it's cheap a, bottles. Yeah, not cheap bottles. Exactly. I said that long winded. That okay. Starburst, though, that you nailed it. It's a lemon Starburst. That's exactly, I was saying, you know, fruit chew. No, it's a lemon Starburst. No, Starburst just is more explosive of a whatever flavor it is. You know what I mean? It's just sharp. It's got other stuff in there, too. No, but it's got that sugary, like, that, lingering That's, that's what covers Yeah, it. yeah. Whereas, again, this one... And it's dense like that, you know, because the waxy Klanglish note, it's chewy like that. You know, it's funny, Mike. I mean, I'm giving totally different notes on this whiskey from when we reviewed it because, in comparison, it just it comes up so, so starkly chocolatey and oaky you with, get like, this, huge yeah. vanilla. Yeah. Whereas, and, like, the fruits are there, but they're hidden. I tell you what. Both are good noses. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would probably say this is an 89 or a 90, but this is like a 91 on the nose. Well, and you know, the funny thing was I was sitting there going, man, this is 90 all day on the nose. I, I gave it an 89 from the palate and the finish. Oh, yeah, we reviewed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, for me, oh, the, for me the nose was 90 all day. It's gone down, since <laughs> I, which just tells you we prefer this nose. Maybe this is a 92 on the nose, because so I, I felt good about my 90. I felt really good about in my head that this was a 90. I didn't, I didn't say it in the video, but I was in my head. All right, so I don't on know the nose. if I necessarily disagree with that comment. But this might be a 92. This is really killing it on the nose for me. All right. All right, All right so we know what the nose is. All right, we'll, <laughs> okay. let's, let's, we'll... Pop in there, Mike. I'll do it. Yeah, you doing two first? All right. Mm -hmm. So my final thoughts on edition number two. Again, beautiful whiskey. Just, man. But again, the, on the nose, I prefer the number two. Just an incredible whiskey. What do you oh, pick man. up? Oh, man. Oh. So I asked somebody once uh, why they liked a certain bourbon and because it was one of those that I just didn't really enjoy and his response was because it gives me all the feels he goes it does everything in my mouth my whole tongue gets lit up I get flavors everywhere and that, explore, that expresses why I like this whiskey right off the bat it's not the fact that it's got incredible spice it's got beautiful fruitiness I got some really nice mm. sherry notes lemon with some really good lemon fruity spice but it's the fact that I mm. get the spice I get the citrus I get the chocolate, I get the vanilla, I get the oak, and it transitions, but it also just, just, my whole mouth is just lit up. Every part of my tongue is experiencing something different, and that makes this incredible experience. Everything you said is correct. Mm. When we reviewed number two, we said a couple things were out of balance. Everything is in perfect balance here. And in the end, it gives you, it brings it together, and it's like a lemon meringue pie, which is sugary, a little bit of a pastry note. And that lemon, that, that sunshine stinging lemon. It's almost like it brightens up the room. That lemon is just so, mm. such a perfect citrus that is intermingled with this light vanilla note that just makes that citrus dance. And it takes the sting out of the citrus mm -hmm. and it makes it just, what is left is pure sunshine. Mm. The, the experience on the mouth here too is balanced. From start to finish, it's just bold everywhere, mm. and it's just waves of different flavors. There, there's, it's super spicy. It's also got a good citrus bite, but it's also got a big vanilla. It's got some chocolate. And so, like, those things that could come off off-putting, like, oh, it's, it's too citrus. It's too bitter. It's too spicy. It all comes together. It's just a big, bold, but it's all of those things. And it's coming at once. It's also coming in waves. Like Pink mm. Floyd said, everything is in tune. And that could not say that any better for this particular whiskey. Everything, you're right, there is good spiciness. There's good citrus. There's, good, there's a good oak note. There's a good lemon note. But everything is almost at the exact same level, almost on purpose. It's almost like you build them up and you took a knife and just cut mm -hmm. them all off at the knees. So they're all exactly sharing an equal portion. What a well-constructed whiskey. Wow. Yeah. Whoever blended this thing, genius. Well-constructed whiskey. Yeah. All right, All right, what are you getting on to? So, one. Um, Excuse me. Yes. We're going out of order here. Um, so one is definitely less balanced. So again, it's, it's chocolate, it's vanilla, it's oak. It's, the spice level, though, goes higher than the sweet level. The fruit level is much lower here, almost uh, tertiary to those other two notes. However, I will say this. It did give me a little bit more finish uh, than... Addition two did uh, a little more linger there, a little more uh, um, I think it's because of that higher spice level that it just kind of lingers a little bit. 
Also brings in some nice oak tannins. Uh, so, or as this whiskey kind of is all up front, real fast, has a nice finish, don't get me wrong, but it, the finish is a lesser event. This one, the finish actually kind of starts to fade and then kind of crescendos up. Um, but overall, I think this is less balanced. But if you have a sweet tooth, you're going to like this more. This is just... A superior whiskey. Yeah. Um, in regards to edition number one, um, I agree with most of the things that you said. Um, you're right. It is out of balance. Spice in was a little bit higher. And I do finally now get oak tannins from, obviously, that sherry cask. Finally. But it took water... Or it took... Excuse me. It took comparing it to this one before I could even get to that point where I could even pick it up. It was that yeah. light of a note. Which adds to my... As the complexity that I thought was slightly lacking in this one. Mm -hmm. But I agree, it's a bit disjointed, um, especially comparatively. And But I do also um, appreciate you at least saying if you have a sweet tooth, you'd probably prefer this one because you probably would. This is very much after dinner, mm -hmm. maybe darker weather, definitely dessert at the end of the day. Where this one, why it would be an impressive whiskey anytime. Ideally, this is spring, summer. If, if this is a very fresh, open air. Even fall. And these, and these are just feelings that I'm getting. Yeah. You yeah. Know, as far as describing this is, the whiskey. This even goes right into fall. This one is, yeah, you're right, it's winter. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, but again, two very, very good whiskeys. I mean, these aren't whiskeys that are average whiskeys or shelfers no. or, you know, something that you could find this type of experience, you know, easily. Ooh, water brought out the Klein Leash waxed and it's big time. <clears throat> But I'll say this, the only part of this experience that I thought was superior in any way, I agree with you, it was the finish and how long it lasted on the finish. But if it lasts and it's overly spicy and it's a little bit tannic, is that necessarily a good thing? And now, you know, that you nailed something I was getting ready to say was that the one negative on this one is that it did hit me with a slightly off-putting, off-kilter uh, bitterness, the tannic note, uh, there on the, right before the finish. Mm-hmm. And it hit, I didn't notice it the first time I had this, um, you know, when we're comparing them side by side. But it just kind of shows that this one really kind of, comparatively, these are not that far apart of whiskeys, Mike. If I had these a month apart, I'd think, yeah, they're pretty similar. And you'd probably, I'd probably agree with them a point or so. Yeah, but when you kind of put them side by side, you really do see that they really went for a different uh, profile, different blend here. Uh, much more, I think that first fill, I think this one used first fill bourbon, this one maybe didn't. And if, if we're wrong, this used way more first fill bourbon, I bet. Whereas I think this one, they probably used a little more of that, that sherry casking. This one, I think they probably used less, but I think they also just have different sherry casks. I think distinctly different. That This one's sherry cask is a little more chocolate forward, maybe, and this one maybe more fruit forward. Just a guess. Yeah, so... Um, i doing a lot of guessing when there's four or five cask types involved. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, um, I have a slightly different opinion on what happened here with these two particular whiskeys. Again, mm -hmm. both very good whiskeys. I think this is a obvious sign of refinement of craft as we move along. Um, I think this one, the edition number two, is a clear superior mm -hmm. to edition number one. I think the things that got disjointed in here were smoothed out in this particular one. I also think, even though they kept a lot of the things about the formula the same, mm -hmm. the minimum age of 15 years old, the fact they used four or five different types of casts, the fact they were using all types of casts. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they just did a better job with this edition number two. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I, I'm really stressing this. I really think they had a better sherry cask for this one. That, that's just my opinion. I can't remember again if it said bodega or not. Diageo likes to sneak that word in there, and I don't always know what it really means. Mm -hmm. But I do know this, when they say it, I tend to think the sherry cask is better. Agreed. And I've been I've had ones where I thought, that was, what, that was, something was special there. Mm -hmm. And then I'll later on read it. So it's not like something I read Bodega and then I get it. It's usually like I'll get something I'm like, there's something special. And then when you read Bodega, it's like, oh, I bet that's what it was. Yeah, but I'm not sure if that just means I like the Bodega that Diageo sources from. <laughs> that could be it too. Yeah, like it may just be purely a personal preference that... It's not that it's better, it's just that it turns out I like it. Yeah, one final thought I want to say about these bottles is this. I do think this is refinement of craft and getting better at what you did. I will also say this. Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to say, give people more sherry. Yeah. You know, people like sherry. People like Absolutely. sweet. Give them more sherry. Give them more sherry. Mm -hmm. And you said this is more dessert. That's more dessert because the sherry influence in this is... Heavier as far as tannic notes of sherry that most people will think of when they think of dessert sherries. Mm -hmm. So I think with this one, who with when they blended this together, I think they were 
not only better what they were doing, but more true to themselves as far as what they were smelling and tasting and said, you know what, instead of just giving people what they want, a darker whiskey and heavier sherry, let's go with what we think is a better whiskey. You know, it's very possible this was less refilled than a sherry butt. This was a better sherry butt. That, that's kind of where I'm kind of going. Maybe. That, that, again, I, just, I get a better note here, but you're right. In fact, when I just added water here and I went back to this one, mm-hmm. I picked up a lot more sherry on the finish than I had been earlier. It was always there, kind of there for me. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I got it. I, you know, I never thought, oh, there's no sherry, but it, it yeah. wasn't there. It's, it's, it's substantially yeah, darker. That, it's that's substantially true, that, darker. And also, that used to, again, I think the first fill bourbon here adds a lot of sweetness. All right, so, anyway, um, yeah. yeah, time with any comparison to tell you um, what we would prefer if someone else was pa- picking up the tab at the bar. I don't think it's anybody's. I think it's a, <laughs> Pretty uh, obvious we've already told you the answer. Right, yeah, one. we prefer edition number yeah. two. And thank goodness that we bought between the two of us 10 of this bottle yeah. and only one of this bottle especially yeah. since we got it yeah. at half the price I, yeah I mean full disclosure we got these for about 300 bucks I paid about 6 and a mm-hmm. little bit extra mm-hmm. for this one and this is a 750 and this is a 70 so. mm-hmm. but from the first time we had this one we realized this was a quality whiskey oh absolutely and uh, I don't feel any different I, if I had to put a number on this I recently put a number of 90 on this I think this is an 89 to a 90 mm-hmm. on a given day I think this whiskey is a solid 91 at all times I could convince myself this is a 92, but I'm going to say this is a 91. I'm going to say this is a 90, but it feels bigger than one point. Thoughts? Yeah, uh, I'm probably 90 on here because I think 91 you're talking, we're getting into um, Lafroy 25, which I think there's there's just more going on there. More layers, more depth, but man, it's not far off. Lilies and lilacs, man. Man, that actually might even be a fun comparison. I know they're completely different whiskeys, but you know what? They both have that like, fruity element. Throw it out there. They even give me some hints. You know, guys, tell us down below if that is something you would want to see. It's like a Kleinleash versus a little Freud. A good one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm interested to actually, you know, think if you think about that, Mike. Mm-hmm. We've never really done, like, comparisons where we really kind of cross distilleries. distilleries into, like, and... Not Pete often. versus non-Pete, you know? Yeah, we do We do Lafroy 10 versus Arctic yeah. 10 or something like that. Yeah, but yeah. So if you guys have any ideas about, you know, kind of off the beaten path reviews uh, and verses, let us know. Until next time, Dustin, what do we want to wish the folks? Happy waxy drinking. We'll see you then.